welcome to yet another episode of the Fat Cats uh, podcast. And we thank you so, so, so much for your continued support and for following us on all our, like, all our social platforms media. and social media. Oh, man, this thing is... Um, we are here yet with our usual three fat cats. Um, Bruno, how has the break been for you? Uh, the break, it wasn't necessarily a break because there was some rugby going on. Uh, at the graveyard, Central Sevens. Uh, uh, very nice rugby. My team made it, my team sailors made it to the finals but lost to to the boys on fire, the Eagles. Uh, yeah, and the Eagles took the overall championship. Uh, very brilliant side, well coached. Um, hope to see them in the top flight and also at Rujumba Sevens because they are in a pool. I think pools see at Rujumba Sevens. So, yeah, the break was okay. Daniel said that. Uh, the Rujumba Sevens are going to be won by either Pirates or Sailors. Do you want to say something about that? Um, it's going to be a tricky one for Sailors, but uh, Pirates are contenders, and um, I would say Hippos. Only by the only Pirates and Hippos. Can we talk about um, how how uh, Pirates doesn't have a very good record at home? Especially with this, with uh, trophies, with uh, uh, cups, tournament cups, and all that, oh. and uh, their best friends. I'd like to call them best friends because everyone wants to call them rivals. Their best friends usually win at uh, at Kings Park. It's painful for the last Rujumba Sevens because getting out of the semis was by a try that didn't reach the line. <laughs> <laughs> but ah, that try, yeah. <laughs> that try, so, was it Kisano? Yes, against students. I wouldn't say it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bad luck, but yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't a nice display last season in the Rujuma Sevens, but we took Wakiso Sevens, which was also at Kingsborough. They're not counting Wakiso Sevens, they're counting also, Rujumba. Uh, let's see, but yeah, we are on fire. We are in charge. We hope to we hope to see the best. Well, Cobbs is usually in charge at, at Kings Park, but okay. We we it's just it's more of an exchange because Legends is also home to Pirates. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was going to introduce Ruben, but as over just today today with us we have two guests, uh, one from Pirates Kings Park and the other one from. Um, in peace, uh, in peace grounds, the graveyard. Uh, well, do you want to introduce Sendifa? <laughs> George. Yeah. My guy. George William. Pirate <laughs> to the bone. I find that name very fun. George William. <laughs> okay. Introduce Sendifa. Uh, maybe uh, he looks like he's a bit far away from his mic, though. Uh, maybe you can help him adjust it, Bruno. But maybe he can just, we can get to know him a little bit. Me, what I know about him, he's a very passionate man. After after Pirates won, the guy was like, "You guys will be making noise for uh, for Ivan Magum. Shut up! There is no one you can compare to Ivan Magum all that jazz." So, good sir, thank you for being on the podcast today. Maybe you can uh, just tell us a little bit about who you are and how you really fell in love with this club that you support so passionately. Uh, yeah, my name is George William Sendifa. I'm a certified Pirates fan. Uh, I've been a rugby supporter for a very long while. Uh, I said supporting rugby at 12 years of age when I joined King's College Budo. But for club level... You were 12. You joined s <laughs> I was 11. <laughs> <laughs> How many classes did you skip? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, honestly, uh, of course, for club rugby, when we start following it initially, Many of us didn't have sides and all. So when we're at campus, majority of us. Mike. It's okay. You continue. It's fine. Right. When we're at campus, Caesar can testify. I think most of us were Impis fans. Mm. Yeah. But because you know, Impis games, you're just going to move from hall, you come and watch. Plus, our mates were playing for Impis at that time. But uh, when I left campus, that was in 2015, yeah. 
you start watching all other teams intensively. So in the end, uh, uh, I did not like Cobbs, honestly. I did not like Cobbs. I enjoyed watching the Heathens because of Philip Okorac. Um, for Cobbs, I would made me watch Joseph Aredo. What a player. At that time, he was a very good player. So eventually, um, I noticed uh, there were many other people that I knew that were playing for Pirates. Uh, there were many Budonians, the likes of Marvin Odong, Chanowira Daniel, and you'd see them developing and becoming uh, very good players. So I settled for Pirates eventually. Of course, the start was not easy, but yeah, the first time we won was 2017. When, as a Pirates fan, mm. 2017, Uganda Cup final at Chadondo. Yeah. I watched that one live. Uh, Emanzi scored the try. Uh, Mala scored the try the other side. Wokos was not happy yeah. and we won a trophy. I think Musa was man of the match. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah the young desire. Mm. Everyone was, who's that boy putting on number seven? Yeah. So that's how I fell in love with Pirates. Of course, the next year I went on to win the league. So. Mm. At that point, but what I happened? Turn back. Was, um, I think after that, I think it was a treble um, in 2018. Yeah. What happened? Because I thought um, that crop would ideally become a dynasty at some point and maybe win, let's say, in the next few years some trophies. But they did go trophyless for some time. Many players left. If you look at that starting lineup that won the 2018 title, many of those players left. Very many players left in the park. Um, the next season, that's when Magom joined LDC. Musa, Musa was not playing. Chano, <laughs> Chano retired. Old guys retired. Then yeah. Baron disappeared. That's when Marvin got that injury. Yeah, yeah. Before he got that injury in 2018 against Kenya. So, the likes of the gigs, there was Anguyo. All those players left. Mwanje. Yeah, Mwanje as well. Yeah. So, kind of affected us so we had to sit back and rebuild okay so uh and we also have uh another very passionate man uh from the proud club of makere impis there was a time when they first banged them uh banter about uh, mm -hmm. about trash talk and uh, everyone was saying that that shouldn't have been it was out of line then guys were asking, where is the arrogance in you? Yeah. <laughs> in all that. But anyway, welcome Joseph Mani. He is a very, a very avid watcher of the podcast. Uh, we appreciate that he has made the time to be here with us. Um, maybe with the same template. Really, what got you into supporting Impis? I mean, I know there are so many good things about Impis that you can, you can, that can really tie you to the club. I mean, you're there next to a hub of very beautiful girls. Um, I have a, a few friends there, but I never got the chance to really support Impis. So for you, what was that thing that made you decide to be Impis through and through? So, uh, my name is Joseph Mani Muhumza, and I'm an EVID Impis supporter. So I remember I started supporting Impis in 2018. Uh, before that, we were just casual fans moving from UH, that's University Hall at Makere, and going to uh, the graveyard. To watch, watch rugby on the normal Saturday afternoon when they don't have plans for money as a campus student. With a free yeah. entrance. Yeah, yeah, with the free <laughs> entrance, of course. Yeah, yeah then, then after the games, we'd stick around, uh, drink with some of the boys, and then uh, one guy challenged me. It was Amos, and he was the club chairman by that time. Yeah, Amos challenged me. He said, but we are always here talking trash and uh, knowing better than the people who are on the pitch. Why don't you come and try it out? Yeah, yeah, so, so then, then I went and tried it out, and then that's, that's when we got relegated, and that's when uh, some mediocre players like myself got some chance to play in the championship. When we were putting 90 past Chifaru, 50 past Box. <laughs> yeah, then uh, when Infis was promoted, uh, you Chief remained one. there. <laughs> yeah, I remained there with the, with the rebirth of the Intangas. Yeah, so I not only became a fan, yeah. but I was a part time player, and now I think I'm a full time fan and media personnel. Okay. Uh, it's like I've ever seen you do uh, refereeing as well. Oh, I'm mistaken. No, I just did the courses. The courses. I went through <laughs> we are complaining about having a shortage of referees and you guys are just yeah. doing These courses. These are the guys who Stick start courses and don't finish. <laughs> 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 but anyway. The courses of refereeing. 
I meant. What do you want to say? Anyway, money. What what in a, according to you? Because we saw last season before we get into sevens where your club is doing tremendously well. <laughs> in fact, in Kidgum, they almost became my favorite club of the year. But things by didn't beat, work out by, by beating, beating Pirates. pirates <laughs> <but> <laughs> a lot <laughs> happened, which I won't go, co- but I'll comment later. I yeah, don't fear. I want, what do you think has changed? What do you think has changed in, in Impis? Because we saw from the, the league for the first time in a while, and trust, I was in an Impis team that uh, I was a manager, please. I didn't play. I was a manager of an Impis team where we ended fifth in the league. Beat Warriors home and away, beat Rhinos home and away, and all that stuff. I wanted to know. It was what, but we never won games, five games, five games in a row. We we saw that happening with Impis at the beginning of at the beginning of the league, and you played really well, and then it has trickled down to sevens. What do you think, according to you, has caused this sudden surge? And also, off air, we're talking about you guys not losing as many players of late like it used to be. Uh, where players were just transitioning through. In apart from apart from a certain <laughs> role who is being <laughs> lied to by pirates, beautiful girls. Um, what do you think has helped you? What do you think has helped you uh, bring up this level of rugby, according uh, to you? First of all, uh, currently we have players who want to be at the club, and that's why they have been together for all these years, about three, four years together. And you have uh, a player. You have a player who has won 50 caps for the club. Yes, uh, Amos Asimi. Yeah. He began playing with him in his form for vacation before he went to Namibia. Who was the team? <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> uh, before yeah, you even continue, I just want people to know that he was a secret cop spy acting as a TM for him. <laughs> is it a coincidence that you're now with cops? No, I just chose the best club in the life. I told her, talked about and, it. And then you dropped a serious proverb. Do you have a proverb for us today? Yeah, so uh, these players have been together, they have played together, they want to play for the club, and uh, they don't seem to be going anywhere apart from a few that are being quoted by uh, my neighbors to the right. But I think if we stay together, <laughs> if, if we stay together uh, with the way the team is right now, we are definitely going to do better. And uh, I don't think the word shock will stay in people's vocabulary with uh, more games that we, we uh, with more games that win and with those sorts of performances that we put up. Okay. Um, ideally, when you look at Impis, there is this notion that um, they are a club that has a, a, a timeline or a, a cycle in that um, if you go there as a youngster in your perhaps your first year or your vacation, you have about a time lapse of about three to four years. Then after that, you tend to perhaps feel out of place because now you're growing older and now you're with a couple of younger boys. Um, how do you think that is? Because we have seen a lot of players come through in peace and a lot of players go. I don't think these players did not love the club for them to leave, but what do you think can be done to make sure that Impis does not have that perception of we are supposed to only play here for three years, once our campus life is done, then we move on? Yeah, uh, on player retention, I think we have uh, really gone hard on uh, our communities. Uh, previously, it was a case of Makere students. So now we have uh, Makere and Mulago students and neighboring institutions. And young kids like Robert St. Ongo who have grown up at the graveyard and are now within the system and are clearly not going anywhere. So it's not a matter of my degree at Makere is uh, culminates into my time at uh, MPs and therefore when I leave, I, leave. I also leave the club. Okay. Um, Mr. Sendifa George. William. George William. Uh, Caesar insists that we say the name fully as it is. Uh, any particular reason why it's George William? Is it after King George, one of the kings of England? England, the club, I, the, the country I support. Oh, George William, come, 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 come. <laughs> <laughs> Caesar has you uh, check. Yes. Why do we think you've ever done to you? <laughs> but anyway, um, tell us a bit about your background with rugby. You've already given us a picture of how um, you uh, got into supporting pirates, but 
where did rugby start for you? You said 12 years old, but how was it? Maybe I understand you're in Budo. So how did that happen? How did that go? Did you play yourself? Uh, if yes, what position? Uh, or you were just uh, like uh, Bruno, a noisemaker ah, from day one. Indeed, I was a noisemaker. So this is what happened. Uh, when I joined senior one, I was arguably the smallest, the smallest boy in our year, mm. or the smallest senior one. But of course, you know, senior one, everyone tries, yeah. So, uh, in our senior one, there's a match that was going on. It was form four versus form five. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, the school team fullback at the time called Aye. He was in form five. He tackled some man, some guy called Masengere. <laughs> when he tackled him, he stepped on his foot. So it was a freak. It was a freak. It was a freak injury whereby his lower foot was nearly detached from his leg and it was all hanging like that. Sound like you're describing some final destination jazz. It was, it was so nasty. So that was from one first time. So from that point, I was like, now me, I'm small. I have no energy. <laughs> <laughs> so I concentrated on watching, but um, I used to hang a lot with the rugby players. I used to make sure that I'm there watching their training sessions. So um, I learned a lot. I, I got to know the rules, the basics, the calls, and that's how I developed my passion for rugby. So I did not play. I did not okay. play rugby. I see Bruno has a fellow, he's there forcing life in sailors, but even sailors, is, is they are yet to give him his debut. There's, there's a time when Manny considered himself the best prop in championship. <laughs> <laughs> you guys had to meet one of these guys. And then he would play only the first half. I like, <laughs> <laughs> pushed to the 60th minute. <laughs> uh, so, um, also, um, at that time, eh, yeah, we used to watch Super Rugby when in school. Yeah. Then um, I was in South Africa house. So eventually I started sporting South Africa. Mm. Then in 2007, we won the World Cup, so I developed a lot of passion. Have you seen I how Siza was shaking his head when you yes. talked about watching Spa Rugby in high school in <laughs> Brunei? <laughs> yeah, it's smart, they could not allow them. You have to go for prep. <laughs> 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 we actually watched the whole of 2007 World Cup, so yeah. And but since it was yeah. the main sport, mm. we had to fall in love with it. Tell us, um, from your point of view, what mm. do you think has um, really made this... Um, resurgence and dominance of pirates really stand out i mean from what from winning the treble then first the the ex uh, the few players going away and then having a bit of a trophy drought and then the resurgence now what do you think in your opinion mm -hmm. both on and off pitch has really uh, ticked right for for uh, pirates bruno <laughs> what's happening bruno have you seen how Joseph has opened the Nilo? <laughs> <laughs> of course, eh? Whatever transpires on the pitch, the hard work starts off pitch. Uh, uh, we have to give great thanks to the Pirates management, uh, the likes of Chanowina Daniel, the XCOM, uh, not forgetting the hard work of Dennis Etiquette. Um, definitely, in that, in that team that won, there were some experienced players that were retained, the likes of Ivan Magomu, the Kisigas were around, uh, Mala. There were many players, but also um, Pirates management um, has put a lot of emphasis in developing many players. Um, you can see many players that have, that have risen through the ranks, and this season they have become stars. The likes of Sidney Gogondio, Ziwa, Arnold, this didn't happen overnight. Um, back in 2021, when Cobbs beat Pirates to win the trophy, there's a picture that Ziwa actually played that game. But how old was he then? He was still a teenager. He was a teenager. So, on top of the management being organized, yeah? Pirates, Pirates is an academy. Pirates is an academy. Through sailors, many players have come through sailors. And I've managed to learn how pirates play because those two teams train together. So every player, when he's playing for sailors, he knows that if I'm given the chance to play for pirates, this is what I'm supposed to do. But also, from the off pitch, when you go on pitch, you have to give a shout out to Bobby Musinguzi because at that time, when pirates became, became a force, 
he was the man behind it on pitch. Yeah? He was a coach of the Chanos. They are now the, he's now the chairman, but he was his coach at that time. But also, Bobby Fowler saw that there's someone he needed to groom. Marvin Odong retired. He started working with him. And you can see Bobby has left, but he left his footprint. And Marvin Odong is now prospering and is able to raise the pirate flag as the head coach. Okay. That's... Um very, very interesting. Yeah, for those who want to just get a background of that story as well, um, you can always check out one of our other episodes uh, with Marvin Odom. We did have a wager with him, myself and Edwin, that if they won the trophy, that he would come on the podcast, and he did come. He came with uh, Chairman Chanowira, and uh, they walked us through what was an ideal journey of how the season was for them and how he got into coaching and he seems to be doing a lot of great things. But um, for those that are watching us today, you may wonder, we, are, we don't look to be in our usual fat cat slayer, which is the Fred and Winnie B&B. Today, we are at a new place. We are at um, Excelsis Gardens Hotel. Um, it's here in Kisasi. Very, very serene. Beautiful, beautiful, um, quiet place. Um, the service is really good. Accommodation, conferencing, facilities, events, gardens bar and restaurant, Wi-Fi, and if you just want to be like us here in the gazebo, the Nile special gazebo, you can just come and have your beer and just chill and have Chibozi conversation. For those that uh, ideally want to uh, get in touch and maybe find out more details about them, um, you can call the numbers um, um, 0200 90 43 99. Or for those uh, that want an alternative number, 0393 uh, 7966 yeah, Excelsis Garden Hotel in Kisasi, that is where we are today enjoying uh, a few beverages here, and of course the water is always there because we need to hydrate, it's very very important, so um, Bruno we are coming off um, a break, luckily for some of us there was Test Rugby to, to watch, I was so happy South Africa lost, I keep telling people to this day I have failed <laughs> to even watch the replay of that England-South Africa World Cup 2019 final because <laughs> I really felt we were the best team in the tournament, but somehow those boars <laughs> fixed us. And for some reason, YouTube is very provocative. It always brings a suggestion, watch full match, watch highlights, but I have failed. So, but luckily enough, there was test rugby over the weekend, but we've had two circuits so far that have passed. Uh, the ginger that was the, the launch of the Nile Special Sevens, and then there was uh, the Kitgum Sevens. And this coming weekend, we have Rujumba Sevens. How have you seen the Sevens so far, and what do you expect for this coming weekend? Um, as a matter of fact, for the past Sevens season or circuits that I've watched, uh, there hasn't been any display of fantastic rugby from both clubs like this season. In the two circuits so far, um, I've been greatly impressed by the rugby that my own club is playing. And besides that, the force that is coming from clubs like Walukuba, Rhinos, the Buffaloes, um, and, and, and also, <laughs> Not Cobbs, of course. I what wrong with that? <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, it's a challenge right from... You see, for most of the two-day circuits we used to have, most of them were one day, the up country. But the two-day circuits that we used to have, I would say, sorry to say, but day one used to be boring. Because you can even predict the, the clubs that can get out of group stage. But right now, it's hard. You can't even predict a quarter final. That's the beauty about this season for the two circuits so far. And and with the two circuits played so far, I'm ready for any shock. And this shock is coming at Rujumba Sevens. To be honest, there is a team that you don't expect that is going to make it to the finals. Or even the semis. I can even bet right now. Ah, those are the things I want to hear about. <laughs> <laughs> it's bet. The <laughs> Buffaloes. Uh -huh. Huh? Uh. and hippos they are going to make some fans leave early or even go to the to the rugby chill fridge 
earlier than, than, than midday, especially on day two, because they've been from, from the rugby that was played in Ginger, Stone City Sevens, by Rhinos, and then to Impis, Impis displaying some good rugby in the quarterfinals in Kitugu. You just expect the best. And you know, those are up country. You know what, what happens with up country and, and the camps. Fatigue, they don't know the pitch. But this, this is a circuit where guys are coming from their homes, 6.30 at 7, they are warming up at Kings Park Arena in Boyogere. It's going to be a tough one. Especially the teams that are in the pools of the Buffaloes, which is Pirates, then Impis. <laughs> Impis might be a problem at Kings Park Arena. And they have that luck at Kings Park Arena. They can, they can force something at the arena. So, to me, it's so far fantastic rugby from both camps and expecting for Reshoka at the Rujumba Sevens. Yeah. Caesar, uh, we want to hear from your perspective. I, uh, you have been, you went to Kitgum. Uh, maybe give us a, a bit of a picture about how the journey was, where you stayed, did you eat party? Uh, for us that were watching. He, he ate food. He ate food. Eh? <laughs> for us that were watching um, online, there seemed to be a bit of a challenge with the grounds and uh, how many players seem to be going down. Of course, we did have a number of unfortunate um, injuries uh, get well soon to the likes of Claude Otema and the rest. But um, tell us, what has your experience been so far of the two-day um, circuits? And also, I want to get what your take is on having two-day circuits up country. Mm. Do you think it is a good thing? Do you think it is something that is still uh, a bit tricky for rugby in Uganda? Uh, thank you. First and foremost, let me comment about uh, rugby before I go into that two-day business. Together, I didn't. I missed the. I missed the Stone City, Stone City Sevens, but I watched them on TV. Um, I, I I don't know why I find always. TV rugby doesn't feel the same as when you're live on ground. On ground. I don't know why the rugby was good, but then I was very very impressed. Everything Bruno talked about, Bruno told me that the rugby the rugby being showcased and the rugby that was showcased in Ginger was un, unbelievable then I got to watch it in Kitgum the teams like it's like all teams are prepared I don't know all teams are prepared they're doing well he then for example took a very young team to to they took a very young team that was upset by a very old player in their team so their age at average wasn't stone played uh Scott played the sevens, but they played really well, and they were a bunch of young kids, yeah. and they found themselves in the semi-final. So you get, like, it doesn't even matter which players, because most teams suffer from their players working for these upcountry games, but the rugby, the level of rugby didn't change. It didn't change at all. And then the teams we go, that where we go, I'm hoping for Toro sevens uh, and Toro. We, we we find the same display because the teams in Kidgum, I said this before, the teams in Kidgum really, really, really did well. The teams in North showed up. You could see there was something lacking because they were playing the perine, the usual central teams, but their tackles were top-notch. Their drift was good. They were extremely fit. And, you know, like we had our, our very own Casito. We're playing Kidgum? Are we playing Kidgum or Gulu? And Casito, Casito has the that. Bolo Falcon. Yeah, Casito, Casito has that moment in a game where he gets the ball and he just wants to run all the way, all the way. But this time he re ran, cut back, went up, went to the wing. But the guy wasn't going until when he stopped and then let the ball, let the ball out. And that was for me an unbelievable thing. The rugby is amazing. I want to shout out to the sponsor and the union. We always complain when the union says, even our central circuits, when they said they wanted a two-day tournament, we complained that the logistics, the players will get tired to do that. And most of the time, they always fall. They, they 
fall to the pressure and they say, okay, let's have two days in Central and then up countries be one day. But they took a gamble with the, together the sponsors. And yes, there are challenges. We have players that work on weekends, so they won't be able to do uh, a two-day tournament. They will do, and then they will show up like on a Sunday. But you can't show up on a Sunday in Kitgum. But man, it is working. Me, this is my personal opinion. It is working, and it's just a start. Next year, it's going to be bigger and better. I enjoyed myself. It's just that the players don't. The players can't drink on Saturday. Okay, those who drink, they can't party on Saturday. They'll play, go get a pool session, and then ice bath, ice bath, then go and sleep. But it's working, it's working because we have time. Because we have time, we won't rush. You won't have a situation where a, a seven, it's already too short. I hate sevens because it's too short. Seven minutes. Then because we are playing a one day tournament, you're playing four minutes. You get. But here yeah, we have time, time for the sponsor to do its activations time for players to recover i don't know whether that recovery though is good because a team can play at two then the next play at five you get but the players but really also relax that, that that blending of women's rugby yeah also in the middle in the it's middle also it's, fantastic it's, it's it fantastic makes, it makes the whole the whole experience artistic yeah and to me uh i mean we are just entering into circuit three mm. of seven but I feel like this is the best sevens yeah, season me too. I'll enjoy. Yeah. They took a gamble. They took a gamble and I'm happy they did. They didn't hear to uh, us complaining about two days and logistics. Let them deal with the logistics. But when we have something where... Because it's working. For me, I believe it's working. And it's going to do better. About the Rejoba sevens, I don't know whether there are going to be any shockers. All I know that it won't be a shock to me because my teams have showed up. Teams are all of a sudden hippos that are defending champions are playing well, yeah, yeah. but they're not on our lips. The other teams that are on our lips, man, Impis, guys, I want to talk about Impis. Kid Kum Sevens, my God. <laughs> Impis came with some rugby, Ruben, where they would play short shots as in they were playing pack rugby in Sevens. My God. Every time pass will take in both, three guys will go on him. Then he racks it. Then the number nine will quickly release. And Impis played against Pirates. At some point, they played PDs. Oh, yes! <laughs> Impis played Pirates. And I was like, eh, this is going to happen. But, man, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> next time, Champion, next time. Champion. Next time. But These guys have some weird luck going on. Where even when everything is not going for them, Pirates always finds a way of winning. Yeah, but that game, that game, that game was really good. But Pirates won. Yeah. Yeah, maybe uh, to just bring in money here. Uh, starting off where he just ended, that Pirates was at the brink of winning that quarterfinal matchup um, between Impis and, and Pirates, of which I, I know there was a lot to prove um, between individuals and also as teams. But it has also showed how much Impis has grown over the last few years, as you have said. Um, unfortunately, towards the end of the game, I believe they they got a little bit too excited and went off their game management that they should have continued. The PDs that he talks about, which are also a bit energy sapping, but um, sometimes you have to do what you got to do, and they didn't. What are your thoughts on the Sevens, and what are your thoughts on Impis's Impis journey and chances in these Sevens this year? Uh, so, so the Sevens this year, generally speaking, the quality of rugby has gone very up. Uh, I was in Ginger for the two days, and uh, you could tell that there is something deliberate going on that said the Kirakuroks, the way they play, the Trojans themselves, the way they play. Then when you get to their senior teams, uh, Hippos and uh, Walukwa, they play very deliberate rugby, they know what they are doing. It's not up to one man to shine, to carry the team. They play in the system manner. That's what I choose to call it. Uh, then, of course, in uh, Kid Goomba, the Kid Goom Lions, uh, Gulu City Falcons, they all played brilliant rugby. Now the question is on the central teams. The question is now on the central invitational teams. Can you match up to what has been happening in our country since this is uh, the birthplace of rugby, shall I say, the central? Yeah, uh, then for in this, in that particular game, people will question decisions made, but I don't think anyone who isn't on that pitch 
understands the magnitude of the game in that moment and what they need to do to win that game. Right. Whether it's the right decision, whether it's the wrong decision to the pundits and uh, people watching and all that, whoever is on pitch wants to win more than you who is supporting from the sidelines. So I believe and I will always back any decision made by any player on the pitch, even if I do not agree with it. Also, I wanted to comment about that. Me, I am going to complain. People came and questioned Henry's decision to kick those drop goals. Man, guys, this is sevens rugby. This is a quarter final. I need to tell you. Okay, yes, they rested, but these guys had played 14 minutes. They had finished playing 14 minutes. They entered into extra time. The extra time was almost even ending. And Henry, in the next person to score wins it. And it's not like Henry's kicks were really bad. It's just luck. But man, guys were questioning Paris had the yellow card. Why didn't they run the ball? Bruh, these guys had run for over 16 minutes. Sevens rugby. Me, I don't. Like Manny I said, you cannot question a player. Even when in your heart you believe maybe he could have done better. Me, I think that was the very best decision he made. He's just unlucky that, that I, the kicks didn't go in. But that was the best decision. And what that game proved is that in peace guys are not slow, like some people alluded. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you say. Uh, yeah. guys were not slow. They he <laughs> matched up and they almost <laughs> slayed the dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. Uh, just uh, 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 my element's explanation of that situation was you, you, you kick and either miss or score. Mm. Whereas you, you go for a scrum, scrum you scratch, there are very many dynamics involved. And here you are having one of the best kickers from the league, whether all four on the team. Mm. So you give him the benefit of doubt, yeah. even if he fails twice. Yeah. I think the drop goals were a good thing. It was good. sudden death, right? Yeah. yeah. It was so a good always, attempt to take, yeah, unfortunately. The mistake, the mistake that would be questioned was rather him slowing down play intentionally for that card. Me, I think right. where I would uh, like was, you guys, you guys say that um, it's not good to to question some of the players because they also want to win as actually even more than we want. Mm. There is a point when um, ball moved from the scrum, from from the scrum down, mm. and he seemed to be looking for a cross kick. That's one of the things I just felt was a bit unnecessary. Um, in such situations, um, you try and keep the ball and try and just right starve. Down. The opposition of the ball, but it seemed to have handed position away. And at least if he wanted to kick, he should have put some distance on it so that um, Pirates could be backtracking and also could they could put pressure on them in their own half. That's the only thing. But otherwise, I think it was brave and brilliant of him to really um, talk, to take to attempt the the drop goals. But unfortunately, uh, he could not find the bearings that he normally does. But anyway, before I uh, we get off that topic. What are your thoughts on two-day tournaments, um, especially up country? We have had a couple of fans complain that that means you literally have now, like for instance, Kitgum, you have four days off. You have to live around half uh, Friday, half the day if you want, if you don't like traveling at night. Then that means Sunday is usually dead. You have to maybe perhaps travel Monday or even if you travel Sunday, the fatigue. So and remember rugby in Uganda is synonymous with what? With party. So, how, what are your thoughts about the two-day tournaments up country? Uh, my thoughts are, we had to do this anyway. Whether now or later, we had to do it. And uh, the logistical issues, I think, are out of our hands. That's up to the sponsors and the organizers to handle. And I think uh, this quality of rugby that we are seeing, Bruno was talking about day one, but also day two. The player, okay, for the first day, the players have enough time in between the games to rest and think about their next game. Then they come in today to either fighting for survival or for victory. So uh, this is something that needed to be done. And it, uh, and it is being done now. I personally don't support it. And uh, I guess with time we shall get to appreciate it and work our schedules around it in order to fit into those today tournaments, especially in that country ones. Okay. Um, George, yeah. George William, as Caesar said. never travels for away circuits. <laughs> Why don't you travel for away circuits? I'm going to travel. You're going to travel? <laughs> <laughs> the guy, Why, so the, not an the the guy is a standby engineer. <laughs> <laughs> standby yeah, engineer. Yeah, really. uh, so he has to be. <laughs> work, work for him. Work, yeah. Yeah. Ah. So anyway, um, uh, I just want to uh, know what your thoughts are about those two day circuits as well. Um, and then... Maybe you can just give, paint for us a picture of what people should expect 
at the Rujumba Sevens? Okay, um, two day circuits. I think um, it has its pros and cons, but I think the the the, the advantages they they outweigh the disadvantages because um, looking at our the way we have won the circuits, I think eh, um, for the second day up. The, our players come back when they are they are really energetic. Looking at last year, no like I attended one of the one day circuits in Tebe. Players were really beaten up. By the time it reaches the semi, hectic. You could find Chisano, the man's knees being strapped, he's, he's limping. He's, it was not easy, and the injuries were much more than the injuries that are that are happening right now. Actually, so, in that circuit, mm. because it was a one-day circuit, some teams had to to do walkovers because time <laughs> traffic, mm. traffic traffic yeah. games were starting like at seven, so it was hard. Actually, I actually remember some time in uh, I think a few years ago in Soroti, the second half of the final was played in, in al- almost darkness yeah. Yeah, 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 because yeah. you have to cram so many games in one day. And uh, it wasn't a good sight, really. So, um, the, one of the advantages of the one-day circuits is what Caesar said. Uh, I mean, what Bruna said, whereby teams, of course, that have to go far, they get a chance to travel back. But for these two-day circuits, um, the players have time to rest, and their bodies can recover. And some of the teams now, like us, we have really benefited from it. Yeah, because even um, a ginger. Desire couldn't play on Saturday, but when he came on Sunday, he changed the game. Wanyamoni played the last game of Chitukum Seven, but this one I'm very sure. When other teams saw him arriving, they were like, ah, kasaja kako kaze. And he's a key player for us, and surely he had an impact. Mm. So, yeah, I think the two-day circuits outweigh the one-day circuits because some players work and not many can can be able to come and they play on Saturday alone. Okay. Yeah. About Rujumba Sevens, yeah, this is going to be the seventh edition of the Rujumba Sevens, hosted by Stanbic Black Pirates. You can see me, I'm kitted in my Pirates yeah, jersey. We're in church. Yeah. yeah, featuring the sailors. I must say the quality has improved greatly from the other. Yes. Okay, I'm going to get are you, there. Are you speaking oh, yes. from the manufacturer's side? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are, we are going to host the Rejimba 7, Stambik Black Pirates, featuring the sailors, our junior side. It's going to be on show also. You'll see our young boys show their skills. Uh, a big shout out to our sponsors, Stan, uh, Stanbic Bank, Next Radio, recently renewed our sponsorship with them, Predator Energy Drink, um, FNHS, yeah. Shout out to all our sponsors that are making sure that on Saturday and Sunday we can host the sevens. Not forgetting FlexiPay, mm. they are going to be very good promos. Um, what, I, I, what I want to advise the fans to do, just download your FlexiPay app or CDK. Mm. One of the promos you've seen already, we have, we have the Nile special promo. For the crate at 40,000. Bro. But also... <laughs> what? A crate at 40k. But also... <laughs> um, <laughs> As pirates, yeah, we are we are still recruiting many fans, and many of them would want to join. You can still use the FlexiPay app to acquire your jersey at one hundred and nineteen thousand. I, I I got this. I already had the away kit, so I got my home kit today. I use FlexiPay to get it. So, uh, you can advise all the fans. You can get your kit so that you can have two different kits on Saturday and Sunday, mm. so that you can come and you enjoy. Very good rugby being displayed. No rebounding the same kit, eh? Yeah. And Flexipe, Flexipe in Kitkum, there was no local who was sober in Kitkum. I promise you. <laughs> like, they were all drunk. Now in Ginger. No local was sober. In Ginger, they, they did happy hours. Uh, even, even Flexipe and, uh, and, and Nile Special. Even Kitkum. So they would, they would announce, they, they, they would announce, uh, in two hours, we are going to have the happy hour. And now guys would extend to the to the counters, <laughs> to the sale points. It was massive. Nile special flex pay. Fantastic. Yeah, well nice done. experience. Well done. Yeah. Nice experience. So Bruno, what are you looking forward to this weekend? Um, Especially from the, the Rujumba Sevens rugby chill experience. Uh, quite a lot. Uh, some of us who are rugby chill diehards. 
and people who stay around the arena, there is a Rujumba Sevens circuit Kaski on Friday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Second thing, there is a partner who has come on board okay. to bring tents and they pitch. Really? Yes. So, of course, we already have bathrooms there. We have shops around. That will be ready in the morning. For guys that maybe come from Entebbe or Namasuba or the scissors who come from, from, from Namulonge, <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, there are tents there. You can come at King's Park and enjoy everything up to Sunday evening or even Monday morning. Wait, I didn't go to you. By tents, you mean... Hey, what did you think? I thought there's no more tents. Ah, no, no, no. no, no. Personal, <laughs> you meant tents. Ah, Personal nice. tents where to sleep. So, well it's quite a lot. Uh, I'm still talking about off pitch. Mm. Now, George already talked about the Nile Special, the drinks and the offers. Flex Pay and Nile Special have just done it. Unbelievable. A crate at 40,000. That means we're buying a bottle of beer at 2K. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> money good for us is wicked, but now fifty k is now break it down for the, us. The, the advantage is you are being catered for as a group, not alone, because you can take a crate alone. Yeah. So the the fun is just going to be immense, and and now when we go to the hydration, because Renzori mm. is a partner, so you are hydrating, and then. The medical, we have the ambulances on standby. Now, being fat cats, <laughs> food, did this world. Hey. Now, did this world is going to be down and up. Oh, at go in the morning, chigere, pork ribs, yalelo fish. Yalelo is coming. Yes, it's just going to be massive. So, so it's just going to be massive. I mean, you, you, you just don't have a reason to miss. Okay, if you have a small meeting that Kwanjula Kuchal on Saturday, at least don't miss on Sunday. Mm. So it's it's just going to be massive. No rugby fan or stakeholder now doubts a rugby party at King's Park and the rugby chill, we deliver. So for Rujumba Sevens, it will be memorable. Mm. Now on pitch, we go back to the kind of rugby being displayed. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah, maybe, Shokers are going to be there maybe from the group just stages. Quickly go, go through the groups. So we'll Rejumba Sevens. Pool yeah. A for the men having Pirates, Buffaloes, Eagles, Box. Eagles who have just recently earned themselves qualification for um, the, the, the big stage. And also winners of the Central Rugby Sevens. The Pool B having Hippos, uh, Rhinos, Warriors, and Chambogo. Pool C having Cobbs, Warukuba, Mongas, and Sailors. And Pool D having Heathens, Impis, Rams, and Moobs. And then for the women, having two pools. Pool A having Black Pals, Nile Rapids, and uh, Lady Probables. Pool B having Thunderbirds, Avengers, and Lady Possibles. Very interesting names. So, uh -huh, you are still telling us about On Pitch. From on those pitch. groups. Mm -hmm. The group stages, mm. it's going to be a shocker. Yeah, yeah. Uh, even I've from the shockers. groups, even from the group stages. Now imagine a game of heathens against impis. It's not going to be easy. Rhinos. Pirates versus buffaloes, not easy. Cobs versus sailors. No, they are in the same group. Mm. No, these are facts. Mm. Now, also remember there's women's rugby. Yeah, that Thunderbirds versus Black Pulse. Yeah, definitely Thunderbirds. Final want to prove a point. Exactly, it's possible. Remember, in uh, in the current table standings, uh, Black Pulse and Thunderbirds have the same points. Okay, and then the third, being the Avengers, are also one point behind. So it's going to be just a, a fine display. And even in the top, top top teams in the men's pools, on day two, remember, Cobbs is not far away from from the first. From the first. Mm. It's down by eight points. So them winning a circuit or even finishing in the final, uh, finishing second, wouldn't be bad for them. 
considering it's three of seven now. So it's, it's you just can't miss this man. man. You, you just can't. Yeah. Yeah. About what? Oh, ah man, I'm still thinking. I'm still thinking about that <laughs> wedding a bit. <laughs> But Caesar, these days you have so many weddings. Those are characteristics of a married man. Yeah? It is the age. It is the age. Yeah, we is can we can tell wedding. by your haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Those daddy are coming here with haircuts. <laughs> but anyway, Caesar, mm. just briefly g- give us your thoughts about these polls and just let us know where you think maybe Cobbs will finish. Do you think Cobbs can be able to retain Rujumba Sevens? I, be, I always believe that Cobbs can win any circuit. Always believe that Cobbs can win any circuit. But the pools are really, really well, well aligned. Um, it's not really definite. People are, people are saying they're upset. Me, I think pool A is a pool of death. I really believe. Because, of course, I don't know why I always feel like Eagles, Eagles that team, that Eagles team, me, I think. Me, I think pool A is the hardest pool, the one that has pirates, buffaloes, and of course, I'm look, I would have looked for. I will hope I can attend like one match at least of that pirates, buffaloes game because I think surely you can attend unless it is your wedding. I know. You see, for me, I believe that the wedding is a church service. This Kwejarabia is I can miss, but the church service is everything to me. So. That's why I'm worried, but I hope it can be like the first, first, but it's in Namirembe. Those Luganda services, <laughs> my <laughs> lord. <laughs> but, uh, but I feel, I feel that Rujumba, Rujumba, Rujumba Sevens never disappoint. I don't like pirates. I really, really don't. But the organization of pitch is just state of the art. Um, uh, on the space, on the space we had after this week, uh, Echodu said something that would not sit well with some people but he said if you want to learn management in the recent time go and take a book and pay attention to what's happening at king's park and for me i don't like the club i don't like what they stand for i don't like their rugby but their organization is state of the art really like they go all the way their their off pitch organization they go all the way the team is equally very good very very good very very unbelievable manager and coach but at fans uh, uh <laughs> no no those guys <laughs> ate me alive <laughs> 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 never give me a anyway, I, I feel like rujumba won't disappoint the organization will be nice the party will be there and the, the rugby is going to be what i'm looking forward to rujumba is the chigere i don't know why but i want to eat that chigere Sunday, first thing after church, I'm going to attack that chigere because Sunday I have nothing I'm going to be doing. So the rugby is going to be nice. The rugby is going to be good. They're going to be upset. Of course, I believe Cobbs is ready uh, to... They're going to be shockers because all teams are going to have their players. And I believe he then, Chisano might be back and so on and so forth. Pirates will have Ivan Magom. Hopefully, if he doesn't play, he said he won't play, but I believe he will, because it's, uh, it's his home circuit. <laughs> so every team is going to be, we will have Ian back, hopefully Casito, if he's not, uh, if he has recovered. Um, How is Gonya? I don't know about Gonya, man. I, I rarely know uh, very many things in Chad so <laughs> I shall ask uh, Posha. His friend, she should know their cousins, yeah. their cousins and she should know how Gonya is. Uh, but I believe rugby at Kings Park is going to be interesting because, you know, because there are seven circuits and it's just three of seven, a lot can change when with the rugby and the party. And the, one thing I, I say about Pirates fans, when they lose, the rugby chill remains a rugby chill. Like they don't disappear or oh, yeah. they don't sulk they will revenge they will ca- get a cops guy they serve you niggas you go home <laughs> with blue balls okay i take it back but so, uh, and, and then at night they bookmark your tweets <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so really that the, the party is going to be there and i believe this seven this year like bruno said they're a bit different they're very very they're much much better so i believe it's going to do well then the other thing about pirates and the off-pitch party at the rugby show that you guys don't know is 
within our fan base and old players, we now have the Pirates DJs. I can mention DJ Sese, I can mention DJ Alza. DJ Sese was by the uh, Pirates hook at some point. Yes. We have DJ Alza, but DJ Alza played for Rhinos, I think. DJ Alza played right Yeah, yeah he, he played for Rhinos okay. at some point. That's a new one. Then we have Derek Files, we have DJ Brayo, we have DJ have Boogie, who is also a smartest. We've so, all quite a number, quite a number, who are always also happy to come back to the rugby chill and, and entertain. Yeah. But Paris is falling this weekend, for sure. But I don't know whether they will lose the entire tournament, the entire sevens, but this weekend they will lose. This week, I can even predict they are not in the final. Oh, okay. This weekend. Me, uh, this they, I no, no, it's okay, there. it's okay. <laughs> they got it, they got it's, it. it's okay. <laughs> but they will not be in the finals. All right. So they will not, the finals is going to be Cobb's Bathers in peace. Allah. Bookmarked. <laughs> If Book there is mark. ever a, a podcast that we come here and uh, and Caesar doesn't say that he hates pirates, if we could have a dollar for every time he says that, we'd be very, very rich. Very rich. Or if we could take shots on that, then we'd be very, very lit. Anyway, you put out a, a particular tweet um, uh, mentioning uh, someone that possibly had their 50k. Maybe walk us through that. How they can utilize 50,000 at Rujumba 7s for two days. Mm. Days. So uh, this is how the 50k works. Uh -huh. It begins working from the gate. What's your rich thing? What's your rich thing? You have to figure that out. Oh, I don't know where you're coming from. <laughs> 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 Maybe a hundred. <laughs> 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 so I don't know where you're coming from. Uh -huh. So you pay your 10k uh -huh. and get mm. times two days. Two days. Yeah. 20k. Now you have 30k. 30k. Right. Uh -huh. You get your boys, like four boys, yeah. who contribute each 10k mm. by your gate. Yeah. So that means you've contributed 10k on the crate. Yes. So you're you remaining with 20. No, you're remaining with 10 now because that is day one and day two. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah now you're remaining with 10k. Yeah. 5k on day one and 5k. Hey, is that enough? With yeah. All yeah. The yeah. Chigiri. You eat yeah. Chigiri. You eat Chigiri. Yeah. Chigiri. Yeah. Chigiri. Yeah. Yeah. Chigiri. Yeah. 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 Chigiri. 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 Chigiri has to be clear. Plus Chigiri in the evening. <laughs> well, um, uh, sorted. Just very, like very interesting. <laughs> As you can see, there is also, if you're on a budget, still the Rujumba Sevens caters for all. But, gentlemen, before we close this, I want to know, uh, Bruno, I'll start with you, your thoughts about, or your expectations actually about this weekend and your predictions for who is winning. I know it's, it's really going to be biased, but I, I, I want to hope against hope and think that you're going to give us a shocking prediction. Um, shockers, like I said, uh, the, f the finest rugby you'll experience is here. Uh, the fact that we've been having fine rugby in the past two circuits, which were up country, and now we have a competitive standing um, with clubs, with players literally coming from home onto the home ground or onto the pitch where the games will be played. It's going to be competitive. Um, but I see, I see pirates still taking it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, no prizes for that that prediction, uh, Mr. Sendifa George William. Thoughts, expectations, predictions. Um, my thoughts are, yeah, I really think we are going to have a good, a good seven circuits, two day circuit. Um, KPA, Kings Park Arena won't disappoint. The management already. Parents management are ready, the sponsors are ready to make sure that the two-day event is successful. Uh, predictions, uh, I'm, I'm not being biased. I love being objective. Mm. Cesar, you know that. Yeah. I'm an objective person. <laughs> yeah. um, Pirates have been the best team over the two circuits. Um, I expect that to continue. And we'll go on and win the Rejumba 7s. That's it for me. Okay. Mr. Joseph Mani. Uh, going into the Rejumba Sevens, I am actually a bit disappointed that the Lady Cranes teams were included in the game because they sort of depleted these other teams in Ginger and in the College of Rugby went a bit down. Mm. And then you would find uh, some players in the Lady Cranes one and two shining. And then their teams uh, Oh, yeah. Really at, at some point, well, Lady Cranes too had, had four players of Black Pals and they were playing against Black Pals. It was funny. <laughs> It was funny, uh, Emily was beside uh, doing her thing, then Alma, Rachel, 
Oh, they are said also doing that thing, and it didn't look good. But since they are preparing for an international tournament, we can give them the benefit of doubt with the coach Cyrus. Uh, otherwise, in, on the men's side, I think we are going to get some shockers, especially on the one. No. Mm. Yeah, we are going to get some shockers, especially on the one. But I really think Cops is going to take this one. Interesting, I'm interesting on prediction. Cops to know what they do at their country home. Mm. As they call it, <laughs> they call it legends. <laughs> what? Right. Branch. <laughs> so, uh, Mr. Caesar, yes. you've had the prediction so far. Do you think you can be objective? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to be. Then try and be. First and foremost, I'm happy it's money who has said this because be careful, they will say I've recruited you from Impis to be an influencer. <laughs> the whole team and I love <laughs> uh, No, uh, I, 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 first and foremost, thoughts, I've never really doubted a Rejumba circuit. I, I never doubt a party or anything. King's Park derailing relationships since 2018. <laughs> it, it will always be a party. Let me tell you, it will it will work. King's Park will work. About the rugby, about the rugby, we are not favourites because, uh, like George said, Pirates has won two circuits. Uh, I don't know about Ginger. I didn't watch. Um, I wouldn't want to say they dominated Kitkum, but they played really well and they had a player who scored every time he got the ball. So. They are the informed team. They are the lucky championship team. They are in charge, as they keep saying. So they are favourites. They should be favourites to win their home oh, circuit. How does luck However, come no. Uh, okay, I can't say this out of respect for. Mm. But let's let me continue. It's okay. Uh, they have a good. They have a good coach and all that stuff. So they are favourites to win their home circuit. I don't think they are going to win it. However, I believe Cobbs is going to win. I believe. Ian is going to be the man of the tournament if he plays, and I believe he's going to play. I believe he's going to be the player of the tournament, and I believe Cobbs is going to win. However, Pirates are the favorites to win. I, you might not give me a chance, so let me say this. Ever since the sevens began, I kept on mentioning people that are stand out for me. Um, in Kid Goom, in Kid Goom, there was a kid, I keep forgetting his name, I hope I never remember it. There was a player in Pirates who was wearing a shirt 11. Remind Just, me Joshua Nguao. Nguao. I he's I found him very decent. He played a very, very good tournament. He was playing well, very calm, not in the showbiz business like many people. I find his players. kind of play same as <sighs> same as Karim's. Yes, more or less. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're yeah. right. This man says what I'm seeing. No showbiz rugby, no mob noise on Twitter. He sat down and played his rugby, and he stood out. He really, really stood out. On top of, on top of Arnold, on top of Arnold, who was splendid for that tournament, he scored everything. But my man of the tournament, my player of the tournament, was Maxwell, the ref. Maxwell, I don't know his second name, the ginger hippos ref. Man, that guy is destined for greatness. He's officiating. I don't know whether it's because he's a fresh, he's fresh, he's a fresh player, but he's officiating. For someone who is just new into the offic officiation, I was I kind of always pray he and he did something. He officiated a ginger hippos game. He, he officiated a gym, and a big ginger hippos game. I think they were playing Buffaloes. I don't remember properly. He officiated that game and he was very impartial. And I was impressed. And I wanted to sh send a shout out to Mark Todd. He's doing well and he's destined for greatness. Uh, how? Uh, no, let me not say this. Thank you. Thank you. You have so many things you've wanted to say but not wanted to say. Why are you a coward? I'm not a coward. Sports I just have I, I I'm not a coward. I just have now we are in fat cards. We have a sport with nail special is here. They might you know Ugandans on Twitter, they just say so many things. But I would prefer Maxwell riffing cops games than a certain guy. Oh <laughs> Ziza. 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 We are not going to get into that referee yeah, conversation that's what I, right that's now. That's why I told oh, you okay. I want to keep it. But anyway, um, it's been a very, very interesting conversation. And like the gentlemen have said and have uh, really projected, the only reason you should miss the Rujumba Sevens is if it is your own wedding, if it is someone else's wedding, you do have the leeway to miss. So, <laughs> Caesar, <laughs> stop, stop, stop <laughs> looking for excuses. <laughs> it is not your wedding, Caesar. Please attend the Rujumba Sevens. 
uh, you'll have a lot of pirates, um, people to usher you in and, and make sure you're, you're feeling comfortable while you're ushered. being stressed by cobs and their results. <laughs> However, uh um, <laughs> friend have his kicks for his posha <laughs> Nothing else but it's okay. And posha comes in late because of work. So I will not be ashamed. <laughs> the you wait for her to the gate. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> But anyway, um, today we are not at our usual home. We're at the Excelsis um, Garden Hotel. Um, like we said, very, very beautiful space. Um, the conference rooms are amazing. The bar, the restaurant, very impeccable. We had a, a chance to have a, a tour of the rooms. Very, very um, beautiful rooms as well. There will be information running um, on, um, the, on, the, on the screen itself, just giving you the details on how you can get in touch with uh, the people at Excelsis Garden Hotel and how you can book yourself a room. For those that are listening to us on the audio, you can get in touch by calling 0393-247-966. Um, thank you for being part of this episode of the Fat Cats Rugby Podcast. See you at the Rujumba 7s and see you next week as well. Bye-bye.